How does Islam address the problem of race and racism? Yeah, you know, the there's a lot of people. This is becoming very popular on uh, social media. I see it primarily on YouTube. They want to characterize our prophet as a, as a slave monger, as a racist. They, they want to highlight hadith that talk about the people in hell go, being black and the people in heaven being white. So it's, it's actually, it's, it's just ridiculous. The, the, the problem is the Satan has really reordered our thinking. Um, what do I mean by that? Shaitan is the one who has us seeing ourselves as color first. Our physical selves as color first. So I'll give an example. Allah says in the Quran, the day that some faces will be black and some faces will be white. And the progression, this is in uh, Surah to Ali Imran. Those whose faces are black, they will be the people of hellfire. The people whose faces are white, they will be in heaven. And the brother will say, well, see, the brothers will say, see, see, the black people go to hell and the white people go to heaven. But the same Quran also says that the guilty on the day of judgment will be blue eyed in terror. Some other people say, see the blue eyes. I mean, the white man is, is going to hell. Here's the problem. You, I'm not black. I'm talking about my actual color. My actual color is not black. That's a term that's been so ingrained in us in this society. We've been influenced so, so, so deeply we say black so much that I'm looking at someone that's brown, that's lighter brown, darker brown. I say, you black. You're not black. I've, I haven't met. I need to find an object to hold to my face. Like the absence of color is black. I haven't met a person that black before. I, I don't know anybody that that's white. That's, that is that white. They're so white, they look like snow. I'm not talking about snow after it mixes in the street and becomes dirty slush. I'm talking about actual snow, like in an Antarctica white. Have you ever met an Antarctica white person? Something is wrong. You say, let's get that person to the hospital. So wh why am I saying that? These are labels that cultures have put upon us. And they've put these labels upon us, and we've accepted them so thoroughly in that such a in-depth level that we never stop to say, hey, wait a minute, I'm brown. Uh, wait a minute, I'm peach or whatever, whatever. You see what I'm saying? So that's the first thing we have to, we have to understand. Because if you read the Quran further, I'll give another example. Allah says that he told Musa, alayhi salam, oh, he gave him nine signs. One of them was to draw, put your hand in your uh, chest, draw it forth, and it became white. Beida, white, like white, like snow white, and then draw it back again, and it will return to its original color. And you even hear, have Muslims say, see, that means if it was opposite of white, he must have been black. But in another reference, Allah says it returned to its, he says he brought it forth white without evil. Without evil, which would, if his white, if white is equivalent to without evil, and then it went back to its other color, which is black, then that will be saying Moses was evil. This, that obviously doesn't make any sense from an Islamic perspective because we don't even attribute evil or sin to prophets. So this color thing, colorism or colorology, whatever we call it, it has thoroughly saturated our thinking. And we can't come into scripture with that type of thinking. So that's the first thing. Um, human beings are on a range, or on a spectrum as it pertains to color. But we are not black, white, like that, like the actual colors in a Crayola box. The second thing is, in Islam, what's important about you is not your physical features at all, or are not your physical features at all. Hence, Allah says very clearly in the Quran that the hands and the feet will testify against the owner on the day of judgment. This is in several parts in the Quran. To tell us, this is very clear, to tell us that our flesh is not really what we are. What we are is the entity that controls the flesh. So I don't care if your hands are 
pitch black or brown or red, if your hands are green or purple or polka dot, how did you use these hands? How did you use your lips? How did you use all of your organs? The, the entity that's making use of these organs, that's the real human being. So, having said that now, if we can understand that the true person that's in the, 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 in the judgment is the one that our body parts are on one side saying, this is how he used me. And the true self, us, are the ones that are saying, no, I didn't, or yes, I did, or I'm sorry, or whatever. Now that can help us understand why some will be black and some will be white. So first we have to separate what color means. Then we have to separate what will truly be facing judgment in that day. You see what I'm saying? So, so we have to follow logic and we have to be, be, we have to be slow to jump to conclusions. Um, there, are other, there are other things about, oh, the, the, again, the prophet having slaves and blacks being slaves. What has to be understood is that at that time, people not only had slaves by war, People, sometimes they enslave themselves. That's number one. Number two, as we said on the old video, the treatment of the slave. The prophet, he said, prayers and peace be upon him, because slavery was a part of society. It just was. I would even argue that it's a part of society today. Um, we don't think about it that way. We like to think of ourselves as refined like that, um, but we're not when you actually look at just what goes on. So, for example, all prisoners are slaves legally, like on the books, they're actually slaves. Um, we have a lot of people who are in situations that they're dependent upon the state, the welfare state. At that time, there was no welfare system. So you worked for somebody. You lived in their house and you did work around their house or you, you fix, fixed their property. You became a, a, a dependent of that person. In this modern time with these institutions, we just sort of assume that things were always this way. So even when you go to West Africa now, you have servants that live in your house and they'll just do work. They still have it that way. The prophet, he said, prayers and peace be upon him. If you have a slave, feed him the food that you eat. Clothe him with the same clothes that you wear. Don't call him slave, call him son. And if he asks for your help with a particular task, help him. So one of the respondents, he said, well, if that's how, what a slave is, it's no use having one. And, that, and again, that was the point. Because this idea of having these societies of such nature, you're always going to have people who are more dependent than others. The issue was how you treated them. In Islam, I'm talking about Islam in the Quran and as taught by the prophet. The, 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 the um, work was to empower them. So we have it in the Quran and the prophet taught on it. When that slave, like they had it here in the history, in the history of this society, had reached the point where they can get their own freedom, buy their own freedom, or they work for a certain number of years, you give it to them, so on and so forth. So that's, that's, that's the slavery thing. And there's a, lot of more, there's a lot more detail, but I'm trying to just go over these points, sort of main point by main point. Even when we read, you know, you read in Hadith, oh, this uh, slave has kinky hair. Like there's this Hadith where the prophet, he said, obey your leader, even if he's a kinky haired Ethiopian or a kinky haired black slave. And the people say, oh, see this oh, with hair like a raisin. Oh, let's see how the prophet is explaining his hair like a raisin. But what the prophet is doing, he's saying, even if this is something that you look down upon following. That's what he's saying. So, so we talk, that's how people actually talk. Like, like as a figure of speech, we'll say, well, if that person is so ugly, then why don't you X, Y, and Z? You see what I'm saying? It's not that I believe that that, I'm saying you're, you're making the claim that this person is ugly. So I say in response, well, if they're so ugly, then why do you care or something like that? So that's, it's like a figure of speech. So the prophet is saying, this thing that some of you all look down upon, even if he has hair like a raisin and he's black, if he's your leader, you owe him obedience. Even this thing that you regard as low, because were they racist? Many of them, yes, at that time. But understand now, the Arabs were ignorant people. They saw themselves better than the Europeans, too. 
They saw themselves better than everybody. So that's another important thing to consider. Like they were actually European slaves in Arabia. They were actually European slaves in broader Muslim society and Africans as well. The prophet, he said, prayers and peace be upon him again in his farewell address. So think about his, his 23 years of, of leading the community from the early days in Mecca all the way to the time when he's really the leader of the peninsula, the whole peninsula practically. And his farewell message, in any farewell message, you will sum up the most salient points that you have been working on. One of the main things that he said that all Muslims know there is no superiority of an Arab over a non-Arab, and there's no superiority of a non-Arab over an Arab. That's nationalism in today's language. You're not superior because of your particular national ethnic group. Then he says though there's no superiority of a white over a black, nor a black over a white. Now, his was interesting because he used color. Technically, in the Arabic, he says uh, black over a red and a red over a black. In, in, in our tradition, we used to call, in the South, whites, we called them rednecks. And they called black people black not because or because of how the sun affected the skin. That's why they have these names in cultural language in general. So whites were called red because the sun makes their skin red. And so in classical Arabic and in other uh, cultures too, whites were called red. They became white later on. They weren't called white people. They were called red people. Later on, they started to call Native Americans red. They did. Europeans did. <laughs> and they called themselves white. So language, this, 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 you see this change. And then the change in the language is now used as a tool. So he, 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 he gave this language. There's no superiority of one over the other. So if that's his farewell message, and he said the most honorable of you in the sight of Allah is the most God conscious, repeating what's in the Quran. O oh, mankind, we created you from a male and female and made you tribes and nations, لتعرفوا, that you come to know and recognize and value one another. Surely the most honorable of you in the sight of Allah is the most God conscious. This is clear teaching in Islam. So anything that you read in a hadith report or that you read even from a Muslim scholar that, that, that plays down the value of a person, or it appears that it's putting down a black person or a white person. You have to see it in this context. You see what I'm saying? You have to see it in this lens. That's what a lot of these apologists, Christian apologists, um, atheists, they don't want to do. Their, their research and their argumentation against Islam is infantile. They're, 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 they're uh, immature. And they're looking for something to get clicks and likes and they want to start trouble but they're not dealing with Islam as Al-Islam came into the world. So the problem of race and racism, one group thinking that they're superior, superior to another group based upon features, hair and nose and all of that. In Islam, this is actually seen as what's called jahiliyyah. One of the companions of the prophet was putting down a slave in being harsh to one. And the prophet told him, you still have jahiliyyah in your heart. Ignorance. Jahiliyyah, we say the age of ignorance, but it really means ignorance prior to revelation. The kind of ignorance that's on you without divine guidance. And he was telling that man that. So uh, an equivalent concept for us, for racism, would be jahiliyyah. You're just ignorant. And as an ignorant person, a person of jahil, you're not as evolved in your thinking. You're not as evolved in your human sensitivities. You're not as evolved in your perception. So that's the understanding. And I do believe, it is believed by several scholars in Islam that the Prophet, for example, present peace be upon him, making Bilal, the first Mu'eddin, he's, these are things that he's doing addressing these problems. He had a Persian, he had someone who was descended from uh, or connected to European. All of these types were in his, uh, you know, close to him. Bilal is the one who he selected to be the Mu'eddin. In the, the office of the Mu'eddin, it's only second to the Imam. The, the Mu'eddin, in the teachings of the Prophet, you know, the, the Mu'eddin is the one who gathers the people for prayer. The Imam leads them. If you go to places like Saudi Arabia now, 
if the, if the imam doesn't make the prayer, the mu'edhan is the one that leads. And there's other things. The Bilal was the one who was the treasurer. He kept the wealth uh, of the prophet. He did other things. So I do believe, and it is believed, that the prophet lifted him up to this status because he's the prophet. He knows the world and what's going to happen. So these teachings even that he gives in his, farewell, in his farewell address, he's addressing these problems that become really big down the road, and we're still wrestling with them today. So it's our job to really present the correct picture of al-Islam so that the true beauty of Islam can shine through. And if, it, if, if, people, if people have a proper understanding of it, they will, be, they, they will have no problem seeing how al-Islam is really a healing for all of these ailments and Ill illnesses that are in the psyche or in the soul of people on this world, in this world because of these influences.